Hi there, everyone. Welcome back. Happy Sunday to all of you. Hope you all had a nice weekend so far. In this video, I just wanted to address a problem that I assigned for homework. And, you know, I feel like the, the most horrible teacher in the world because this one was extremely difficult. I mean, all related rate problems tend to be pretty difficult when you're learning the concept for the first time, but this one is exceptionally difficult. Um, it took me a while to even get the solution myself. And I actually had to go into Mathnasium, my other job, and get help from my boss. My Mathnasium boss sat with me for about 15 minutes and helped me work this one out. So I'm sorry to my students. I'm, not, I'm usually not this horrible of a person, but I thought that I want to at least kind of redeem myself by showing you guys how to do it. And of course, we don't really have enough time to do it in my normal class. So that's why I opted to make a completely separate video going over the solution. So let's read through the problem. And we, we know it's definitely a related rate problem, given the information and given the question that they're asking us. So let's read through it. A street light is mounted at the top of a 50 foot pole. A six foot tall man is walking away from the pole at a rate of five feet every second. How fast is the tip of the man's shadow moving when the man is 40 feet away from the pole? So it doesn't matter what kind of problem you're given. My, I recommend that any kind of related rate problem you're trying to work on would be, it would be beneficial to you for, to draw a picture of the situation, no matter what kind of problem we're dealing with. So I'm not good at drawing. I'm gonna keep things really, really simple. So I have my pole right here. The pole is 50 feet high. And our little man is right here. Our man is six feet tall. And I kind of want to draw a line of sight going from the light pole, from the light to the place where the person's shadow would be projected. So the light starts up here. This is the top of our right pole. It shines a light in this direction. And our, we can see that the person's shadow is going to be this distance across. So what happens to the shadow if we were to move our little man left or right? So let's see what, find, let's see what happens when we do that. So I'm going to be really lazy. I'm not going to draw a stick man. Instead, I'm going to draw a, I'm going to draw a figure that is as tall as the stick man. So this is six feet right here. And our stick man also has a height of six feet. So this is six feet. And that's really sloppy handwriting, six feet. And then this right here is also six feet. So I want to draw another line of sight originating from the same point, but this time it will be projecting a shadow with a bit shorter of a distance than what our the shadow that our little man has. So we can see that the closer our figure is to the pole, the smaller the shadow gets. And the same thing would apply if we do something similar way out here. If we drew another distance, another vertical distance of six feet way out in the distance like this, and we draw another line of sight being projected from the light all the way down to our little man's head, we can see that the, the shadow would be getting bigger still. So we can definitely see that the length of the shadow definitely depends on the person's distance. It's not going to be a fixed rate. It is not linear. So we want to see if we can establish a relationship for the length of the shadow based on the distance from our person to the, 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 length, the origin of the pole. Can't talk today. We want to see if there's a relationship between this quality right here, this quantity I meant to say, and this quant, qual, this quantity quality as well. Why can't I talk today? I apologize for that. I'm, I'm tongue tied for some reason today. We want to establish a relationship between those two quantities. I got it that time. Quantities, not qualities. <laughs> so let's think about a way we could possibly work on that. So let's take a look at this information. See if we can convert that from English into algebra language. So we've taken care of the 50 feet. We've taken care of the six feet. So those are just vertical distances. We've accounted for both of those figures in our drawing. We've extracted all possible useful meaning from both of those bits of information. So we know that our little man is traveling at a rate of five feet every second. So this is a calculus class. We're learning things like limits and derivatives and integrals. So we want to take this information and convert it into modern calculus notation and vocabulary. We want to take the fact that this man is traveling at a rate of five feet per second and then convert that into calculus language. So what that means is it's going to be a rate and we, ought, we should, by this point, we should automatically be conditioned to think of a rate as, oh, hey, that's a derivative. This right here is some kind of a derivative. It's some kind of rate of change of some quantity. So what's changing? So the person's distance is changing. We start at the base of the pole, presumably, and our person is moving to the right. So the distance between the pole and our little man is constantly changing. 
So that's going to be a rate of change of the person's distance from the pole. So that means if we call this entire distance x, I know that's a really sloppy line right there, and I apologize for that. We can call that x. So if x is the distance between the person and the pole, we can say that the rate of change of that distance with respect to time is going to be five feet every second, or just five. And then another quantity we have to consider would be the length of the person's shadow. We want to see if there is any relationship. Well, I mean, we know for sure that there is a relationship between the length of the shadow and the person's distance from the pole, but we want to figure out exactly what the relationship is. It's proportional by some amount. We want to see if we can find the proportion. So we're going to need a little bit of geometry knowledge to help us out with this one. I'm going to draw another figure. So we know that we're interested in the moment when the man is 40 feet away from the pole. So let's pick a moment where this distance right here is going to be 40. The 50 feet still applies. And then we are going up six. because that is the height of the man. And I know I'm really horrible at drawing. The six clearly is much bigger than that one. So please just ignore that. I wish I were better at drawing, but I don't think that's ever gonna happen. I'm not going to art school for this. So just try to get used to my very disappointing drawings. As sad as that is to say, they're gonna be pretty bad. So we have our figure. What we don't know is the length of the person's shadow in this proportion. So 40 plus X would get us the base of our triangle. Actually scratch that. I want to use x for the total distance between the pole and the tip of the shadow. So x would actually be this distance right here, which means I want to relabel the base of the smaller of the two similar triangles as anything else. I think I'll just call it s. So now that we have variables written for all of these things, we want to establish a relationship between s and the rest of the information on this triangle. So let's see if we can find s at this given instant. So of course, s is going to change as things often do in a calculus class, but we want to see if we can model just how, what S should be in this particular instant when the man is 40 feet. So the man is right here and the person's shadow ends right there. So we're gonna need some geometry. We're gonna need to set up a similar triangle situation where we have S over six, length of the shadow divided by the height of our little man equals 40 plus X, so the length of this, the base of this in big triangle, so 40 plus S, divided by the height of the bigger of the two triangles, which is 50. And I'm not going to grind through the tedious busy work. I'm going to spare you the derivation and the solving for S, but we get an S value. When we solve for S, we get a value of 80 thirds, 80 over 3. So Remember that this is the length of the shadow. It would be 80 thirds feet away from, it would be 80 thirds feet. That would be the length of the shadow when our man is 40 feet away. So if we wanted to create a proportion that relates S and 40 together based on the person's distance from the shadow, we could create a proportion like this. We could say that we have 40 to 80 thirds would be the proportion between the distance between the man and the pole and the length of the shadow created by the light projecting off the man onto the floor. So this is the proportion we want to use. And if we were to simplify this, we would get some, we would get two thirds. If we were to simplify this, we would get three to two. Now, how do we use this information to help us? So we want to create some kind of a differential equation, some equation involving derivatives of these quantities to help us figure out the unknown. So we want to find the rate of change of the shadow because the distance of the shadow is definitely changing as the man moves on. So S is the length of the shadow. DS dt would be how fast is the distance, how fast is the length of the shadow moving as the man travels away from the pole. So we have DS dt would be two thirds. I got a bit ahead of myself there. It should be the derivative with respect to time 
of two thirds X, which is gonna be the total distance between the shadow and the pole. So I want to re-emphasize that part again. So this entire horizontal distance right here, this right here is X. X is the distance between the pole and the tip of the man's shadow. So we have this differential equation to help us here. And now we want to see if we can solve it. So DSDT is what we're trying to solve for. They're asking us how fast is the tip of the shadow moving when the man is 40 feet away from the pole. So DSDT is what we're trying to find. So what we want to do now is we want to just solve this differential equation. We already have it in the form we want. We're trying to solve for DSDT. So let's go ahead and just solve for it now. So what we get is DSDT equals two thirds. We can always move a constant outside of a derivative without any effect on the answer. It does not affect our answer at all. So this is going to be oop, not DSDT. I apologize for that. That I messed up there. DXDT is what I meant to write. And we, I think we already know dx dt. Yep, x is just the distance. Or I'm sorry for relabeling re things constantly, but in this context, x would be the distance between the man and the pole. So dx dt is actually going to be five. We've we're already given that information. So I'm going to draw a little arrow right here to show that we're going to the next step. Ds dt is going to be two thirds. Whoops two-thirds dx dt, which is two-thirds times five, because five is dx dt. So dx dt is ten-thirds, and the unit would be feet per second. So this is all they really wanted us to find. They wanted to find how fast the shadow is moving at this particular instant, and we were able to find that. So the shadow, the tip of the shadow is moving at a rate of ten-thirds feet every second, or hang on, this is quite isn't this isn't the right answer. So this would be the length of the shadow alone, but we're going to need one to describe the entire thing because we have not only the distance the man's traveled, but the distance that the shadow has also traveled. So this only covers the distance of the shadow, which means to find the total distance when the man is forty man is forty feet away, we're going to need to add them together. So the tip of the shadow is moving rate of this would be five plus ten thirds feet every second. And the reason why it's five plus ten thirds is because five would be the rate that the man is traveling. And I'm sorry about the variable delegation getting really messy, but hopefully you'll be able to understand my thought process and understand the answer. No, no matter what, hopefully. Let me know if you have questions. I'm always available to answer questions if you have them. So it would be the rate that the man is traveling plus the rate that the shadow is traveling. That's why we do five plus 10 thirds. So we get an answer of 25 thirds feet per second as our answer. 